So today, we're going to go as far north as you can possibly go in California. We're going to go to Crescent City, which is about 10 miles from the northern California border. Now I've lived my whole life in California, so I'm really interested to see what happens, because it's like, it's like the end of the world. Going on this journey, you sort of recapitulate that and come back fulfilled as a Californian. Who knows, Oregon might not even be real. Might just drive off the edge into the abyss. Turning and turning in the widening gyre. The falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart. The center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood dim tide is loosed, and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. Surely some revelation is at hand. Surely the second coming is at hand. The second coming. I've never been to the Golden Gate Bridge before. Down below us is where uh, Kim Novak jumps into the bay in Vertigo. A lot of Alfred Hitchcock's later movies were set in California, specifically like Northern California. I think he thought it was kind of, maybe it was because of the fog. I think it probably reminded him of London a little bit. He thought it was kind of foreboding and spooky. Look at the rivets, I love rivets. I've been making this papier mache cutout of all the counties of California. I can name all 58 of them and their county seats. So this is my cutout of Siskiyou County. County seat is Erica. This is Lassen County. And the county seat is Susanville. And this is where we're going. Little tiny Del Norte County. Isn't she cute? I went on this trip for three reasons. A, I had to because it was a class assignment. B, the other two people are pretty talented and fun individuals. Um, so I figured it would be a good road trip. And C, I wanted to find the perfect croissant because I mean, what really matters most in life? Let's be honest, it's a good croissant. Something that you can enjoy and hopefully share um, with everyone else. Sam finally found his first croissant. 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 I'm gonna make my croissant. How is it? Is it the um, perfect croissant? No, it's anything but that. It's uh, perfect so far. Yeah, it's the best so far because it's the first one we've gotten. Um, wow. So I don't know. It's very like it doesn't have the texture of a croissant. Here, let me 
taste it. It's like really stale, to be honest. Um, oh and God. rubbery, it's hard to eat. <laughs> it's not flaky. Oh, it's, it's just, buttery and gross. Yeah, well, it's fake butter too, and you can taste that uh, because you can almost taste it before you actually Gosh, damn. bite it. This is definitely not the perfect croissant. Too bad. Yeah. Better luck next time. Yep. This is why people OD on pills and jump from the Golden Gate Bridge. Anything to feel weightless again. actually did find, like in the Pacific Northwest, I think mostly in like Washington now, but they would find these ancient burial grounds, like these burial mounds, and when they opened them up, they found these skeletons, you know, that were huge, you know, like seven feet tall, giant heads, so I imagine that's what all this giant business is referring to. What giant business? The giant, the giant business that we just passed, the, uh, the Avenue of the Giants. It's an alternate route. It also could just be the trees. Yeah. The trees are giant up here. Yeah, they are. And as the book of Genesis says, there were giants in those days. Oof. It's been fast. Yeah. Nephilim and all that crazy stuff. Yeah. A lot of ancient mysteries up here. Sounds like a History Channel TV show. Somewhere along the line, I like missed a stop. You know? In the Pacific Northwest, it's kind of a compassionate place. It seems to be in a lot of pain and have a lot of sorrow in it. Um, I'm not a naturally empathetic person. So I think going to the Trees of Mystery uh, might uh, help a little bit with that. best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. Surely some revelation is at hand. Surely the second coming is at hand. The second coming. Hardly are these words out, when a vast image out of Spiritus Mundi troubles my sight. Somewhere in the sands of the desert, a shape with a lion body and the head of a man, a gaze blank and pitiless as the sun is moving its slow thighs while all about it reel shadows of the indignant desert birds. The darkness drops again, but now I know that twenty centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle, and what rough beast 
its hour come round at last, slouches toward Bethlehem to be born. There is much to see. Take your time. Kind of cool. It's almost like everything here is bigger. The trees are bigger. The ferns yeah. are bigger. There's all just the giants uh, that we heard about. Look at the moss and the ferns. We used to have. I don't know what kind of ferns these are. We used to have uh, maiden hair ferns in Irvine. And I saw one growing out of the side of a rock in the desert once. Loose. Yeah. It's pretty. Ooh, they're sticky. Mm. Um, Is that mistletoe up there? No. Mm -hmm. That's uh, it's a type of moss. It's actually I only know this because I was into like model like remote control trains when yeah. I was a kid, but oh, it's really popular. Oh, is They're that the kind seniors. of stuff they use to like make thicker? Yeah. Oh yeah. Mistletoe has actual leaves. It's a yeah. um, it'll grow into and around trees and hang down, but it does have actual, it's a pretty... It's real, it's fake. This is why people move to young mountains and jump from the Golden Gate Bridge. Anything to feel weightless again. Trees of Mystery were cool. Uh, very kind of, you know, a bit of a tourist trap, but it's still cool. Yeah, because the trees are so big, they're all like 300 feet tall, and they're so old and ancient. So it's just like it's like stepping back in time, you know. It's very quiet and still, and you just hear the the wind in the needles of the trees. You know, and you kind of smell, it's very moist and damp up there. You smell the damp wood and the, and the sap from the trees. 
You know, it's just a sort of calming atmosphere of that place. found the second croissant um, at this coffee shop. Kind of so, cute. Yeah, it's not bad looking. Although I did see um, after we ordered it, uh, the barista put it in the microwave to warm yeah. it up. So I guess these are microwave croissants. Um, right away, different from the other one. It's definitely got a kind of a, um, it looks like it has a softer inside and a crispier, flakier outside, which is kind of that's, what you want. Because that's good, right? Yeah. Yes, okay. but it does not look like a typical croissant. It doesn't so. turn. Yeah. Ooh. Mm. Look at that foliage. Hmm. How is it? You know, it's not bad. Um, is it the perfect croissant? It is not the perfect croissant. However, it is definitely something that resembles a croissant both in look and texture and flavor, which is a damn sight better than uh, the 7-Eleven. Um, yeah, the 7-Eleven croissant. You can see the air pockets on the inside of the croissant and the flakiness, um, which are good signs because the way that the croissant is made, uh, a third of the entire croissant is butter. So you make a slab of the dough and you make a slab of butter and you roll out the dough you put the slab of butter in the middle, you fold the dough over it, roll it out, and you do that again and again. And so basically what you end up with is dough saturated with thin layers of butter. So as the dough cooks, it makes the flakes and makes everything permeated with butter, hence why it's so good. So it's good that you can see that in the 7-Eleven uh, croissant, it did not have that. So right away it's better. Yeah. Good. Point, which is just 
just below Crescent City, which is way back that way. It's right between the beach and the redwoods. And it's really spooky and atmospheric. It's pretty cool. This is one of my dreams, is creeping around in the middle of the night in the Pacific Northwest. It's really cool. Yeah. On the left, you have these massive trees. On the right, you have this endless ocean. Yeah. And in the distance in between, you can see just kind of the shadows, almost yeah. the ghosts of the mountain cliffs. Uh, it's beautiful. The moon is so bright. Uh, and those stars. Swiggity, swiggity, coming for that yeet. Oh, look at that, look at the city. Yeah, that's what that sounds like. It's all recorded. Oh. The yeet could be like five different cities in here. There's Crescent City in the middle. It's Crescent City, everyone. That's where we're staying. This is Oregon, and it turns out it's real. You see? This is Oregon. It's real. We didn't fall into oblivion. I'm a little disappointed, actually. I can't believe it. Yeah. Even the name sounds fake. Oregon Trail. You have died from dysentery. <laughs> you know, Ayn Rand says that the glowing tip of a cigarette represents the spark in the mind of an intellectual. I wonder what it represents in this situation. The burning desire and, and the quest for truth, which is why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to bring my book of Yeats poetry and read The Second Coming on the other side, but I lost. I don't know where it is. So we just went to uh, a Brio Bakery, which is the first bakery on the way back home um, that we stopped at. And it was the first kind of non-chain establishment that we stopped at. So first off, just looking at it, uh, you can see that they used egg wash, not like some weird food coloring or just like baking it dry. You can see 
some like super buttery parts, um, which is nice because that means they re used real butter and not like a shortening or something that permeates the entire dough. And then you can see how flaky it is on the inside or on the outside just by like little uh, bubbles or blisters in the dough. But it does have integrity, which means that it's not all super flaky. It tastes really good, yeah. What do you taste? It's, um, uh, the texture is really great. It's flaky and crispy on the outside and then nice and fluffy on the inside. Um, yeah, it's just really good. Look at that tear. Oof. Oof. What's this? Magic? disappearing croissant man behind the camera. Eat! Eat, eat y'all. Oof. Where's the wax folks back? Oof. What would life be like without a little bit of mystery? <laughs>